Oh, we made it past 30 episodes. Yeah. Oh, thank God we're still here. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I was really expecting the universe then, but it hasn't because of you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to be listeners to Cog Talk. Thank you for checking out the YouTube. Uh, thanks for all the donations. Yep, we continue to be strong because you support us, and yeah, we just, we love you. We love you. Heart. Don't, don't fist my heart. Don't fist it. Quite. Run Monster. Children. We will. We're trying to say thank you. Again, guys, thank you for helping us with uh, Cogstop. It means a lot to us that you like it, so as long as you guys keep watching, we'll keep making them. And we will do our best to damn it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. One, two, three, four! Productions Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Josh. And I am Optimus Prime. We've gotten a lot shorter. That happens when you turn into a fat black guy. Aren't you part Jewish, by the way, since we have you here? So, so was it like Optimus Prime Shabbatize? It's embarrassing and I don't Bum. want to talk about it. Is jazz turning? Autobots roll out. <laughs> oh yeah. <roll. laughs> I'm jazz. Scott. Is Jazz in this one, uh, Fat Albert? <laughs> oh my god, that would be awesome. Hey, 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 you'd you'd still have, you'd have the same musical ability. Yeah. As we are Cog Talk, and today we are recording from the big house in the Marvel Universe. That's right, prisoners are here. Marvel prisoners. Doctor Doom. The Mandarin. Ultron's not here. Ultron is He's awesome. missing. Yeah, fancy that. Hmm. He let us in and then bucked out after us. Yeah. And his shift was over. Yeah. Wait. Did you notice how his face went from like kind of bluey to kind of like orangey red? Yeah. Uh, like, it looked like he had a bad day. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know how an AI has a bad day, but he has to defrag himself. He has a microchip <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking dumb. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to get right into this with one of our best responses ever to a beatdown. Mm -hmm. Considering that this is our third beatdown ever. <sighs> it's number one out of three. Hey, it's like the USA. In every sport besides like running. hockey, gymnastics, curling, curling, running, bobsled. Damn you, Jamaica. Damn <laughs> you, cool runnings. Yep. But beat down. We had a beat down this week, and it was pretty much scary character versus scary character. Mm -hmm. So characters from horror movies, things like that. We got a phenomenal response. We got over thirty, I want to say thirty, thirty-two fights submitted. Nice. And we had to narrow it down to the top four. Yeah, it was rough. So I'm going to grab a list, not a script, for those of you watching. It's not a script. So, Josh, how was the fight? It was good. <laughs> no, uh, no here fights are fine. Here, here's our top list. So, this one came from Chris Shane on Facebook. Good friend, good musician. Uh, he gave us the beatdown of Christine, as you may know, as the killer automobile from Stephen King's Christine, versus the Goblin Diesel from Maximum Overdrive. That's right, the one that went against Emilio Estevez. And still lost. And still lost. Uh, um, well, what's your what's your poll? What's what's your thought on this, Josh? Well, if we're talking like raw power. Yeah, I have to give it to the Goblin, even though you know, kind of gets beat by Emilio Estevez. 
you know, the less successful brother of Charlie Sheen. Which is very sad considering Charlie Sheen. Yes. <laughs> that, that's my point. Like, like, I don't mind losing to, like, platoon Charlie Sheen. I hate losing to post two and a half men Charlie Sheen. I'm a warlock, and the warlocks actually get, the warlock community actually gets upset at him. Tiger's bud. Yes. Yeah, that Charlie Sheen is shitty to lose to. Although, let's face it, that is the rock star life. I can so. What 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 about you, Scott? What's your thoughts? I'm gonna go with Christine. Why Christine? I like the car. It is a sexy automobile. Yes, that that is a vehicle. All right. Here's here's my thoughts on it. There's a difference between a car and a vehicle. Josh looks confused. No. What do, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm going with Christine. And it's because Christine was a solo act. All that chaos happened on its own. I was about to say her own, but it's technically just the car. The Goblin Diesel had to have toasters and electric knives and vending machines hitting people in the crotch. Totally died. Lawn mowers running over kids. Uh, and every other car, including one that was mounted with a machine gun to help it out. And it still lost poorly. Christine was the silent killer. She and that was to run the fuck over people. <laughs> <laughs> and see, if you put it from the helicopter that doesn't die in maximum overdrive. That's true. That would be an entirely different fight, in my opinion. Yes, because helicopters fly. Well, that it tells them, like, thank you for coming aboard. This is the last knife in your chest. Ah. Uh. Yeah, Wild Wild West taught me that anything that flies beats anything that's stationary on the ground. Yeah, even if it breathes fire. Even if it breathes fire and is run by a man with no legs. Or dick. Or dick. And a guy with metal for a head and a crotch? I don't know. I yeah. didn't get that. Yeah, speed down! Christine wins. <laughs> the next beatdown was given to us by Steph Stefan Delgado, which I'm not sure if you know this. It's a, it's a small plug, but he doesn't know we're doing this yet. Uh, he is an author on Amazon. Uh -huh. Yeah, so make sure you check out his books. I forget the title because I wasn't planning on doing the plug, but Stefan Delgado, he's on Facebook, check him out. He submitted a, a unique take on this horror thing. He didn't give us two bad guys, he gave us two good guys. Let me rephrase that, two good boys. He gave us Danny Torrance, which you remember as Red Rob, Red Rob from The Shining. Versus Andy Barclay. He lives in my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Barclay from Child's Play 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so it is Big Wheel versus Red Rider. Andy. Calling it up front, Andy? Andy. He survived Chucky three times. Yeah. And even though it's a demon possessed voodoo doll, they're still got the size advantage. It's not demon possessed, it's a, just. The serial, serial killer, killer possessed. But yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean demon possessed. Voodoo possessed. Yeah, he's, he's, it's, a, he, he, he's, it's a serial killer and a doll. It's a little he's hellion. A, he's a serial killer that knows voodoo. Yeah. Put into a doll. It's nice to have in your toolbox, evidently. You're going to get shot the fuck up, I guess. It, it worked for him. Yeah. He had a kid. Two. That was weird. That was really weird. That was a weird movie. Yeah, two kids. Yeah. But it was Jennifer Tilly, so... No, that's not a plus. What are you thinking? <laughs> Danny versus Andy. <laughs> Andy, duh. Andy, same reason? Uh, yes. That, just the, some of the ways he got out of that were way better than any of the kid did, because the kid basically just played off on his own while his dad would go beat his mom to death. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, and of course, to seal the shutout, I have to go with Andy too. Let's face it, Danny just rode around with Big Wheel. Yeah. Which, it was a great shot, and from a film perspective, I'm like, ooh, like, The Shining was a way better movie than Child's Play. Mm -hmm. But if you're throwing these characters into a ball pit of death, then Andy's, Andy's coming out on top. Andy's, you know, paddling on the ball pit on top of Danny. Yeah. Using the carcass to save himself. 
You learn some things when you're chased by an evil doll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last one from the big beatdown segment. Submitted, uh, submitted, uh, submitted by Geeky Gamer Girls co-host Mandy Prince, and that would be Jaws versus the Gen Two female from Deep Blue Sea. So you pretty much have the battle of Big Shark versus Smart Shark. Well, the Gen Two is also larger, but it's uh, it's like, larger, but like Jaws was. I wouldn't like, say yeah. it's, 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 it's Jaws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jaws, Jaws can swallow boats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jaws is I'm gonna eat your boat. And Gen Two was like, I can't free willy my way over this fence. So I'll just sink the facility and make it lower so that way it's easier to jump. Because that was a I smart fucking fence. shark. Yeah. Oh, I'm also gonna sacrifice these guys and uh, these things so I can get there. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go first on this because of you two bastards have had your chance. Uh, Gen I, two female. Yeah, I'm going Gen two female. Main reason it killed Samuel L. Jackson. So it instantly like raises its threat level. It, it's like Shadows of Mordor. Like it went from being like a peon to a fucking war chief the <laughs> instant that it killed Sam Jackson. <laughs> Like, it just went through, it just swam through the rest of the line, ate everything on the way, and then ate Sam Jackson, and did that stupid pose, and then came back and fucked your human elf spirit ass. So it, uh, leveled up to 90, I think, was it, like, what, 60 bucks? Exactly. It, 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 gave, <laughs> it, it gave Blizzard twice the amount that the game's actually worth, and got a free level 90. <laughs> That shark became infinitely more badass after eating Sam Jackson. Fair okay. enough. But then it gets beat by LL Cool J. Knocked down to peon. Because <laughs> 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 he's the same. Sometimes war chiefs fall into stupid reasons. <laughs> they fall off cliffs, they run into a fire. They have a stick of dynamite shot into their side. Yeah. Thank you. Things happen. <laughs> you don't say war chief for long in the orc tribe. Okay. <laughs> So you're going Gen 2? Mm-hmm. Is it because of Ella Cool J in a successful acting career sense? It's more successful than some people. Like Scott. Charlie Sheen. Like me. Like you. Yeah. Like Charlie. Uh, he, but, he wasn't more successful than Charlie Sheen, because Charlie Sheen always gets to fall back on, like, hey, you remember Ferris Bueller? I had a part in that. <laughs> hey, you remember Platoon? I was the main guy. Immediately after this, has like, oh, those are the mighty dogs. <laughs> and young <Yeah>. guns. <laughs> Flying V, this bitch. I'm, I'm gonna have to go Gen 2. Yeah, I, 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 for the record, we're, I just realized that we're saying it uh, like this. It's Generation 2, like G E N. The shark's name wasn't Gen. Well, it wasn't like, Gen A, stop eating people. <laughs> Gen A! <laughs> Jenna, stop. Why are you doing this, Jenna? <laughs> swim, dorsal swim. <laughs> I just want to make sure that there wasn't, like, a person who hasn't seen Deep Blue Sea and is like, what's going on with all the gens? Like, it's just... Yeah, the, the, what I want to actually justify this one is we you have, you know, the primal killer, which is Joss, with the, don't get me wrong, don't eat any badass. Uh, that Joss is, but I think it get sequels because of its children. Yeah, uh, Seed of Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> I broke Josh just with that. But the Gen 2 female uh, from Deep Blue Sea was smart enough that a team of research scientists, until it was already too late, didn't realize that they were being herded in a specific pattern through the facility in order to, you know, make it so it sinks yeah. at the level that... Pretty much forcing them to flood their own thing yeah. in order to let the thing sink and for her to jump off. I am so worried you're going to unplug that cord. <laughs> my, she swam through a steel fence. She didn't jump. Yeah, it was going to be just a simple chain link. Oh, that's right, because the fence was reinforced at one point, but it was just, like, shitty at the top point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and to be as smart as that, and not even knowing the inside of the structure, but just being able to observe it from the outside, 
and figure that out is a terrifying level of intelligence. Yeah, and uh, for sure. argument against Jaws is like you always watch movies where it's like, you know, Tony Jaw, Tony Jaw versus the huge like wrestler type guys, or you know, Jackie Chan versus someone bulky. It's always smaller and smarter wins. I mean, Sherlock Holmes did a whole slow motion sequence where he wrecked a guy's shit in his mind before he had to wreck the guy physically. Yeah, multiple times. Exactly. So, smart and agile will always win versus big and bulky. Not to mention, you know, Jaws can only eat people. Like, he, he would only be effective in that fight like 25% of the time. Because then it just retreats, disappears. Yeah, to go to <laughs> the theme park and starts killing people. <laughs> Gotta go to my day job, I'll be back. <laughs> oh, honey, it was a horrible day in the beach. Oh my god, what if Jaws and the Gen 2 made it? I quit the ocean. <laughs> yes, that's exactly, thank you. <laughs> you put my exact thought process that went through. I just looked at you in absolute fear, like, <laughs> and you summarize it. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what that image of my mind was. <laughs> I'm glad to know that if something terrifying happens, you're the one that's going to stand there for a second while I'm already running. <laughs> I got a head start. No, you're going to say something snarky before you die. <laughs> like, I might die on the shitter, like Jurassic Park style. <laughs> but you're like, uh, what's his ass from uh, Pitch Black, where it's like, I never got to see Brandon. And then, like, Fireball is like dead. It's like, well, no one else heard that, and now you're eating. <laughs> yeah, nobody liked that guy in that moment. He's kind of a douche. And douches die. Yeah. That's viable. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm the only one with the collar. I'm fucked. <laughs> Damn me for dressing nicely. <laughs> and giving a shit. Uh, uh, fuck your professionalism. So here we go. Lightning round. Uh, I've got names. So I'm going to say the name first. I'm going to give you their matchup. So here we go. Marcus Mays. Matchup. Leatherface versus William Defoe's facial expressions. Facial William expressions. Defoe's facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Boondar Saints have been terrified. Okay. Both can be called Leatherface. Uh, this one is from uh, Chris Chain again. It is Leatherface. Versus Ash when he has his chainsaw hand. Oh, I thought you were talking about Pokemon. Uh, does he get a boomstick? Yes, he gets a boomstick. Ash. Ash. Cool. He defeats himself. He passes the exos uh, existential crisis bar. Well, that and he, I think the shotgun would beat Leatherface with three tar strength. Mm. Yeah. All right. This one is from Jennifer Ortiz. Chucky versus Leprechaun. Battle of the Small. Leprechaun. Leprechaun. Chucky. Whose series getting revitalized by a horn swap from the WWE? Uh, that's right. <laughs> Alright, I guess, I guess I might, I'll lose that one. <laughs> and this one was from uh, Hannah Benson. I think Scott will like this one. Killer Clowns. From Outer Space. Versus Hobo with a Shotgun. Hobo with a Shotgun. Oh, it's killer clowns. clowns. With a shotgun. Clowns. All, all their like neat clown objects are actually deadly, deadly devices. Doesn't e matter. Even cotton shot. candy, so they can suck your blood through a bendy straw. Hobo with a shotgun. And it had Chris. And it had Chris in it. Hobo with a shotgun. Killer clowns. So they came all the way from out of space, Scott, just for you. And they got beat by a hobo with a shotgun. That hobo <laughs> doesn't only have a shotgun. He's got nasty ass fingers. That is strangely a great callback to episode one. <laughs> this was the perfect matchup for you. But anyways, kill the clowns. Yeah, clowns would still win. Nope. Thank you so very much, Hannah and all the other people that wrote in. Uh, Chris, Stefan, got to look at the list again because I threw it away trying to be like who's lying, and I'm not your Perry. Because you don't have memory. Yeah, without a script. Marcus, Chris, Stefan, Mandy, Jennifer. And Hannah, thank you very much for all your submissions. You guys rock. We will be having more beatdowns, more music wars, and stuff like that. We're talking about doing them weekly, almost. Yeah. So not not weekly beatdown, but just changing up the game, getting some weekly more game. 
crowd interaction. We love the response that came from you guys. Thank you. Yeah. This looks like a decent time for a plug. No. It's not time for a plug. What are you doing? There is a reflection on the camera screen that I'm looking at that when I put my face here, it's over my face. I thought it was the window behind me. Oh, it's the freaking light in front of you. And almost directly behind you. Scott's learning about things on the camera. Also, because I actually have good eyesight. Scott, you're looking at a letter P. <laughs> that is that is a just a symbol on the camera that you've been staring at. <laughs> <laughs> Shit <laughs> happens. Yeah. For those of you listening to the audio podcast, we do have our camera up. It does have all the symbols still on the screen while we record, and Scott's getting freaked out because there's a letter P on his cheek. So, A, but he would be a pow balloon at that point, so if you want to float up in Super Mario World, just, uh, just go ahead and grab that balloon. Yeah, come on, man. Let's get high. <laughs> oh, wait. That makes you fat. Yeah. I didn't notice a difference. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, just the balloon goes away and it's like, uh, like you just like barely hover over the ground. You feel gassy. <laughs> plug. So, no. Yep. No. We don't have a plug, but we want to let you know that we appreciate you guys. We did have a donation from the website from Heather, which we thanked a couple episodes ago. And pretty much just thank you guys for listening to us. I mean, we appreciate it. We're 30 episodes plus strong. Yeah. Uh, and it means a lot to us. So, you guys rock. Make sure you keep checking out the Facebook, checking out the Twitter, going on to our YouTube, clicking our Amazon link from our website, and just being all around badasses. This plug's for you. High five your face. Hey. So, in a segment... These are both Geekology articles, and the only thing I can go is no internet why. We have two things. First of all, let's get down to it. South Korea... No. Yep. ...is partying harder than the United States. I don't like smoking, though. And it's because of a certain new KFC menu item. Mm -hmm. And that would be the Zinger Double Down King. This monstrosity is the KFC Double Down. So you got your chicken, your bacon, your cheese, your sauce, another piece of chicken. They have topped this. They have taken that formula and added a burger in the middle of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Chicken Burger the creepy burger shop in one of the Buffy episodes? Yes. Where it turned out that it was like, it's people, you're eating people. Oh, it is South Korea. Oh no. The glorious leader has been eating people. That's North Korea. South no. Korea is the good Korea. The, the, the no, reason yeah. it's a limited time engagement is well, that was a mistake. Sorry. No, no, no. It, it's kind of right. The reason it's a limited time engagement is because if you haven't heard, uh, it's Kim Jong-un, right? Is the North Korean leader? Yes. He's disappeared. Oh. Nobody has seen him in like a week or two. There's only several <laughs> Zinger Double King Double what? Several? I, I hate what is this? A Zinger Double Down King. What there's only so much meat that you can take off a man. Yeah, but it's Kim Jong un. <laughs> he he was fat, but he was also short. But he yeah, he was fat. But he was short. He was a pudgy little bastard. Yeah, he's done. We're gonna get bombed, but <laughs> if we release this episode, <laughs> they're gonna declare war on us. Yeah, oh, shit, we're at war. <laughs> yep, that's gonna suck. Uh, so next up, let's make fun of ISIS. <laughs> who, who, else, who else can we make fun of? Uh, Anonymous. Uh, let's go. Every guy in Gamers Gate. And Mike Tyson, why not? Because I can't eject. You didn't build me my eject button. <laughs> I've been sitting <laughs> here for the last three minutes trying to eject from this. You were stuck here. Yeah. 
because I gave myself the eject button. I hit it and it just launches Scott instead. But, this, <laughs> but the roof doesn't open. The roof opens above Josh. No, but the roof doesn't open is what he's saying. No, but it'd be better. Like, it was just absolutely fucked up. I have the button, he has a seat, you have the hole, so it just throws him to the ceiling. It's like, oh yeah, that's my ruined Scott button. <laughs> Which, if I had, I would abuse the fuck out of. It would be glorious. No, it wouldn't. It'd be yes. painful. You're playing a video game, and it's like, click, and then disconnect, lag, or all the characters are firing cars. Except for you, you get to fire marshmallows. I can still win. <laughs> if they have like a... You know, Diabetes? Yeah. <laughs> no, my sugar balance! I don't know if they would actually scream that. <laughs> uh, second, oh god, internet, no. Was, there was a character role uh, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. As you know, there's several, uh, or I shouldn't say several, there's dozens upon dozens of oh, yeah. character actors that go out there, and they make some money by dressing up as other heroes. So, like, you'll have street performers dressing up as, like, Batman, Superman, things like that. Captain Jack. Yep. Both of them. We had, on Geekology.com, there's a video of a brawl between characters. This brawl, it has involved... Batgirl and Mr. Incredible, originally. Freddy. It then progressed to involve Waldo, <laughs> Freddy Krueger, and Chewbacca, which, where the fuck is that comic series? <laughs> Can we please get that as the new A-Team? <laughs> so is Chewbacca uh, taking over for Mr. T? Abso-fucking-lutely, and ironically enough, Freddy Krueger's face. <laughs> <laughs> Can Waldo be Murdoch? Yeah. That'll work. Crazy and then, and then Hannibal would be Batgirl. Because Mr. Incredible in the situation was a dick bag. Yeah. Uh, what had happened was they got in an argument for some reason, and a guy just started videotaping it. They were filming another thing on the walk. And it went from an argument to a physical fight. And through the fight, it ended when Mr. Incredible, who was a guy that is looked pretty athletic, taking Batgirl, who was not as athletically built. I'm not saying that she was like fat or like she was scrawny, but when you've got like Ray Rice esque body type, yeah, and you've got someone that's not Ray Rice esque body type, the fight's one sided. And he took her and just pretty much like body slammed her on the ground, which in, that's when Freddy Chewbacca, uh, Waldo, and other bystanders instantly rushed at this guy. He only flipped her though after punching and kicking her. Yeah, he was trying to turn her into Oracle. That's all. <laughs> Justify a crime. Wouldn't it be if she actually did get paralyzed and came back as Oracle on the strip? That would have been sad. But amazing. Yeah, you you would have to like respect her. It's like, well, I'm paralyzed now. I was Batgirl. Let's keep going with this. Make the best of it. Now I'm Marvel. Let's do. Well, that and I think that would, she would fall off a really shitty Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um, I understand. Like those guys get such a weird rap. Like, I was watching a, I think it was a movie, it was a documentary called Diary of a Superhero. And most of these guys are just, like, trying to get their big break. Yeah. You know, which is probably not the way to do it. Like, no one's gonna have Chris Evans and then, like, some other guy dresses as Captain America and be like, Oh, well, fuck you, Chris. We found someone. And he works for pennies. Yeah, he works. <laughs> <laughs> 17 cents a day, we can have him. What was yours again? A million? Yeah, fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> No, but like it's it's their way of like drumming up their money, you know, buff, yeah, buffering their buffering, buffeting, getting money, patting getting, their yeah, patting their pockets, you know, paying their rent, getting food on the table. I would be surprised if they made enough to pay rent. From the documentary that I was watching, they do, but all their homes that I saw weren't like the most pristine, and usually they had someone supporting them. 
So uh, I know that the guy that was uh, Superman, I forget his name, but he had like a girlfriend that really, really, really cared about him and like paid all the rent and his house was decked from like ceiling to floor with Christopher Reeves Superman material. Does he even have his breathing chair? No, I don't. God damn it. <laughs> Not Christopher mm. Reeves material. <laughs> just Superman material, god damn it. He that said Christopher be... Reeves. <laughs> but it's, oh. Someone who's not a dick would know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, it was, it was, chairs. It was, it was all heroic, and it was all like <laughs> very sweet and fanboyish, and then you made it creepy. <laughs> Where he's like, now that you're gone, I'll be Superman. You're not just going backwards. Fly. <laughs> it's like just him running down the street in the opposite. Like, <laughs> oh. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> I now understand it better than anyone as that he used his own breathing tube to power the chair. It tastes like him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's my last joke. Can we about be it. done, please? This yes. Is super good. Uh, I did not see this. I refuse to see this. I will tell you why after you guys get to talk about it. There's a reason why we're recording from the big house today. Yeah. And that's because there was a certain trailer that was leaked and then officially released that you guys saw. I don't know if I ever heard anything about it being leaked. Uh, as far yeah. as I knew, it was just plop, official release. Well, it was, it was okay. leaked. And this, then... this, this, this is how it happened. It was after the Agents Marvel, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, and they, Marvel Studios came out and said, hey, next week we're going to release the uh, Avengers trailer, uh, the Age of Ultron trailer. And then like 10, 15 minutes later, it leaked online. And the Marvel Twitter account just said, simply said, damn it, Hydra. Yeah, that was totally a, uh, let me put the city sign. There's no way that it was a leak. It could have been, it, it honestly no. could have gone either way. There's, there's, two, there's two situations that could have happened. That was totally set up from the beginning. Just the sequence of events you described. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind, Marvel's like, Haha, we're going to make a Hydra joke at the end of this. Yeah, there's two sequences that could happen in my mind. There's either A, like, a guy had to sit there and plan this, because it's it's still a great joke. Yeah. Like, we're going to release this in six days, and then, like, it releases immediately, and it's like, God damn it, Hydra. Like, th there's a guy, there's either that guy that's a marketing genius going, like, this is going to be a really fun, like, sub-level joke. Which is 99% of probability of what happened. Yeah. Or there is the other guy that is the savior of the company. Because they're like, we're gonna release in six days, someone else released it without them knowing, and there's one guy after 10 minutes going, you know, it'd be a really funny tweet. <laughs> and I wanna believe that, Josh, I wanna believe. I'm sorry. I wanna believe that some intern walked in, and when the, he heard the news, like he was the last one in the office, and everyone else is stressing out, and he goes, oh, damn it, Hydra. And they all look at him with big doe eyes. <laughs> And they're like, Mike, you did it. And Mike ascends to the heavens with a man neck. It would be the muffin car guy. That's what it'd have to be. The stereotypical and the boss takes secret advice from. That's who it'd have to be then. Yeah. Or mailroom guy. And like, yeah. just like, oh, damn it. Like, he's like the only true fan. Like, everyone else is like shirt and tie. Like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah, I, 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 I want to say it was an accidental leak and everything was an accident. They just came back with like, let's do it like this and make it seem really cool. But it was more likely than not, it was uh, it was planned. Yeah, let's be honest. When it comes to marketing, Marvel does a really good job of like playing up their fans. Yeah, yeah, very true. So, so the you shit. two saw the trailer. Hulkbuster armor. Oh my god. Did you want to give a quick summary for anyone who hasn't seen it? Because I, I, I refuse to see it. it. The majority of the trailer is narrated by Ultron, who has a big hard on for Pinocchio. Yeah. Uh, he keeps quoting it and, and throughout the entire thing as he's like taking over a uh, suit of armor at Tony's house during the initial scene. And then as it progresses and Pinocchio puns keep going, 
it ends with, and there's no strings on me, and you finally get to see the uh, fantastic looking version of Ultron that they did. And in the background of the entire trailer, you have um, uh, Wish Upon a Star done very creepy, like it's a very slow oh. down. Oh. Yeah, it, uh, um, along with that, you've got like the Avengers, you've got uh, Bruce Banner. I think he might be having a mental break. Like he's wrapped up in a comfort blanket uh, with, with the Avengers. It's just like it looks like he's been traumatized. It looks like Hulk does bad. It looks like Hulk does real bad. Yeah. So uh, this um, might be the beginning of the Hulk uh, banner thing, where uh, Hulk basically gets to be the dominant force. And it's very possible that this may lead us to the Planet Hulk movie. Considering you've got the Hulkbuster armor, all these things are happening with him. I can see maybe the end of Ultron Part 2. They launch him into space. Well, because they're already talking Iron Man 3 being Civil War. Uh, and then Captain America 3. Or Captain America 3, my bad. Iron Man 3 already came out. Uh, but yeah, uh, Captain America 3 being Civil, Civil War based. So yeah. it would make sense that they would want to try and capitalize on some of their bigger storylines. Before they get to the next gen of superheroes coming out, the magic era, where yeah, some of those, those yeah, where some of those guys don't have as much of a part, like Doctor Strange did not send the Hulk to another planet. Yeah. Well, and if we do that, one, that that's like a whole universe, uh, because he basically says that and that leads to the comic uh, Son of Hulk. Uh, Except for the storyline when the planet gets ruined and he comes back. Yeah. As far as I know, no, he's like full on safe. I don't know, I don't know. Know. <laughs> His blood like rejuvenates the soil, so he grows crops and so they can grow. Um, he fights the, the evil on the planet that's just dominating the uh, planet with fear and a fucked up virus. And generally just whoops ass, gets a bitch, and becomes king. There is a storyline though where something happens on Earth that affects Planet Hulk, and Hulk goes back. To bitch slap someone. Is so, it? It can go many different ways. I'm excited for Age of Ultron, and I'm excited for what Marvel does next. I don't think they're gonna do a Planet Hulk. I, I like as much as as well they did with uh, Mark Ruffalo yeah, as Eric, uh, Bruce Banner. I was gonna call him Eric Banner. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't think they can capture certain aspects of the Hulk well enough. To do a movie, and that's all they've ever really shown, yeah. really in the, what they've attempted. Like I would love to see him get his own standalone though, because Christian was it Christian Bale in the first one? Christian Bale was the first one. Eric, Eric Bana. Eric Bana. Yeah, that's why. Uh, and then uh, Edward Norton had theirs, yeah. or had his. And Ruffalo seems to be doing so well with the Avenger movies. I would love to see him as a standalone Hulk. Movie. And they are going to show the Hulk's, like the Hulk realizing and coming, like he, figuring out that he is not just a destruction beast because he has a moment with uh, Black Widow. Mm -hmm. like, it, it, all you see is like the Hulk's hand and hers, and like they're coming together. They have and a weird relationship like, because right Hulk, before he smashes her. Well, Hulk. Hulk actually, like, when it comes to the people in the Avengers, it's come down to the fact that Hulk is one of the first people to trust Black Widow and actually trust her with a lot of information, depending on the universe and the source material, everything from, like, some major secrets about himself to the weapon that can kill him. So... I'm not surprised they have that little moment of like, you know, she's trying to see past the beast and help him. I'm just saying, like, honestly, what it comes down to, we don't know where they're going to take it, and that's what I like most. Yeah. What, giant gamma dick in Redhead's face? Is that no, where they're going to take it? <laughs> Talk about where they're going to take the movie universe, not the porn universe. <laughs> that's already been done. Uh, Pat's quiet. I think he's lost in that. Well, the only thing that's coming to my mind is gamma for a fuck. Anyways, yeah, there, there. You guys talked about the trailer and more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot. There's a lot to glean from that trailer, and but again, it just looks like it's going to be a fantastic thing, and it looks like Captain America gets his shit wrecked. Yeah, broken shield. 
Oh, oh yeah. So here's here's my soapbox. Keys. All right. So what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out how the shield got broken. Actually, yeah. You need to like vibranium. This shouldn't just like break this like laser cutter. Maybe or maybe like Ultron like cuts it. Maybe there's something up with his body. Maybe he's got a vibranium sword hand thing. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. A, ga- a game is supposed to like fuck with vibranium. I don't know, maybe the whole castle has to do with it. Yeah. Maybe she beats him. Punches. Punches him. Here's my personal thing. is I love Marvel. I love the Avengers. I love Joss Whedon. If there is... Whenever there is a new Marvel movie that I'm super excited for, like the Avengers... I refuse to watch any of the supplemental, any, any of the early stuff, the leaked footage, the behind the scenes, the interviews. I refuse to watch it. The reason is, is that I'm already so excited for the movie that if I saw a trailer, I would just, I think I would just cream my pants. Just nearly, yeah. Yeah. And I, it, the trailers for Marvel stuff come out way too early for me. It's May. Yeah, it's May. It's, May. it's seven months away. There's a trailer for it. Seven months away. And? That, that's I way better than two years in advance. Yeah. I know. And it makes me sad because I still have to wait seven more months to see this. But it's not two years. It's not even a year. Show me the trailer a week, a couple weeks beforehand. Like John Wick. John Wick is supposed to be an amazing movie. Mm. I'm going to go see it. I'm hell bent on going to see it. Because it caught on my radar two weeks before it released. So it's like, oh, that looks interesting. And it's out now. Immediate satisfaction. Marvel would just be me sitting there staring at a screen for months going, well, John Wick is actually like prepping for another movie. It's the whole point of the first movie. Which is actually where all the major action sequences are going to be. I will stab you. <laughs> Stabbing, <laughs> so you said nothing. I just wanted to bring something up since we were talking about superhero stuff. Remember that really, really bad Superman movie? All of them turns. Yeah. All of them. Superman returns. So, ever. so the first five Superman movies you have to go on. Superman Returns. All of them. The guy that plays Superman in that is now in uh, Arrow, and he seems to be playing a very major part. I can't figure out who he is, Superman? but he may be a villain. Or he's super. super. No, it's not Clark Kent. Are you sure? Because I'm positive. But he could shut up, Pat. It's not him. It's Clark Kent. It's not. It's Clark Kent. No, it's Clark Kent. Since when did Clark Kent have enough money to buy a company? He was hanging out with Bruce. He's doing an undercover investigation on money laundering, and he happens to be very good at it. Lex Luthor sponsored the Daily Planet. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there that he's Superman. a man. I was kind of like, oh, that's cool. I'm glad to see that he got work after that monstrosity of a movie. Which of the five? Yeah, he's saying no, the only one that he was in. Because the I, guy that was in the original one is dead. <laughs> <laughs> we remember breathing chair. <laughs> I, I do wonder, did he have the breathing chair or the he did not. tongue remote control thing? God damn it. <laughs> no, he had stem cell babies from that South Park episode. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Christopher. Christopher. I am Chris. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, I think that we're kind of coming uh, close to the end of our episode. Yeah. Any, anything else that you want to glean off uh, the Avenger trailer before we start doing our closing? If you haven't seen the trailer already and you're not doing what Pat is doing, go watch it right now. When you're done with the episode, go, go, go. This is it this way? No, no, it's, it's this way. Actually, it's going to be up there. You got to type in the thing right, right there on the Google or on the, the search bar. Don't Google it. Just you're on YouTube. Just YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, if you're listening to the audio, go to YouTube and. Do it. Yeah. It's amazing. If you're doing what I'm doing, protect your pants, don't launch it. Save yourself. 
from having to do laundry? Kids. I'm just saying. Frank, that if it looks like Jesus, I mean, I, like, just I'm, do something. I'm expecting it to be so good that I will be able to paint the walls. That's a dick joke. Oh, I finally cracked a dick joke. You guys are going to be dead man. Breathing but. chair. <laughs> <laughs> Start wrapping this up. Uh, Bye. It's not, it's not that. It's not that soon. Matt, Josh, Scott, see ya. No, that, absolutely not. We gotta do. We gotta do the appropriate closing. So thank you guys again for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, where can they catch you, Josh? Man must evolve on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Xbox Live and a bunch of other places. Yeah. Xbox 360. Go bug the shit out of them. I have no one to play with because this guy's on one and this guy doesn't play games. Hello. <laughs> um, yes, maybe if you play Xbox 360 with him, he will show off his new Windows phone with Cortana's voice. Just to just to just to make Scott jealous. It's not Cortana's voice. Don't it you is an AI, it, it's an AI called Cortana, but it's not actually her voice. AI. It's the the talking phone thing. Just wait. There's a patch. Oh, I'm sure there will be eventually. Where can they catch you, Scott? Uh, Twitter at New Bill Scott. And nowhere else in the world. No. He doesn't want to give you his Xbox One thing. If you want to find me on Xbox, it's all one word true Ezio. That's Ezio from Assassin's Creed. True. The true the T in true is capitalized, the E in Ezio is capitalized. Good lord! Come find me. R U E E Z I O. There you go. You, you had to give the whole medium. I I had to. I do it so much on Xbox. It's that you can catch me at the main Twitter at cog underscore stop cog as in you know cog stop production. I swear to God. And then the underscore as like a buffer between the two because the capitalization didn't work. And then stop as in like don't or to cease. You can also catch us at the Facebook, facebook.com slash Productions. You know, we like Cogsaw Productions. It doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, Cogsaw Productions. Check out the website, www.cogsawproductions.com, YouTube, and slash Cogsaw Productions. <laughs> Look what you started, fuck <laughs> Uh, you can catch Scott on his personal cell phone number. It is 623. Uh, <laughs> And I think I'm getting the signal to end. So, any words of wisdom at the end? I'm liking doing this now. Fuck off. And here you go. Confucius said, baseball lie, man with four balls cannot walk. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, folks. See ya. Bye.